Good morning, everyone. Good morning. In fact, I was gonna, isn't it great to be part of Every Nation Slough? Yes. yes. And have yes. so many nations and have a nation minded mission, right? It is awesome to be part of Every Nation Slough. And do you know that out of all the nations that are here, there is one particular nation that is increasing in numbers? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Did you know, Every Nation Slough, that there are now five? full-blooded Egyptians amongst their midst. Yep. Six if you count both my children together. So why don't you say with me, Sabah al-Khir, which means good morning. And it's uh, Mavdi and Marianne who've come to Egypt and joined us recently. I encourage you to say hi to them and practice your Arabic with them. I'm sure they will appreciate it. But yes, uh, good morning everyone. So uh, my name is Kareem, as Greg said. And it is my privilege to speak to you about uh, today's topic, which is work. And it's part of a series called Life Matters that we've been doing uh, over the past few weeks. We've done the first two. We've done um, love and marriage, and we've done all this and about and single and singleness. Uh, so that was Greg and Sarah Bradley. So do catch up on that on, on the Every Nation uh, website, on the SoundCloud. Do listen to them. And the reason we're, we're doing this, the reason we're talking about this, is that we believe that God cares about what you do in this world. Yeah that God cares about your life, about the matters of your life, that Jesus talked and demonstrated and taught us how to live well. We don't believe that we're just waiting for the afterlife. You know, we, we believe that right here, right now, Jesus has taught us how to live well. So we're going to talk about work today. And I want you to turn to your neighbor, right? And I want you to just discuss a quick question. And the question is, how satisfied are you from zero to ten with your current work or job or vocation or study situation from 0 to 10 and why. So just turn to your neighbor, take two minutes, give a number and why. Okay. All right, let's land this. Come on. Thank you. Can I have a quick show of hands if you scored a 10 out of 10? Anybody scored 10? Come on, don't be shy. No one scored 10. Oh, one person. Yeah, come on, Mandy. That's right. Anyone scored a zero? Oh. Anyone scored anything in between? Okay. All right, so it shows that I think for most of us, most of us, there is probably a level of satisfaction, but also potentially a level of dissatisfaction of where you are at the moment, right? And I think it's important that we talk about this because I read a statistic that approximately 40 to 50% of our waking time will be spent at work. That's a third of your life. You know, a third of your life you'll be spent at work. And I think it's important for us to have a theology, an an understanding of what the Bible says, what Jesus says about work, because we're going to spend so much of our time doing it. Um, And I think it's great that we're going to start with Jesus and see what he done. So um, if you've got a Bible, please turn to John 4, verse 31 to 32. And let me just say here, if you are not a Christian, if you're not a believer, first and foremost, welcome We love having you here. We're glad you're here, and we're happy that you're here, regardless of what you believe. And my hope is that, although we are preaching from the Bible, we're talking from the Bible, I'm sure that some of this you can use for your own benefit. I think there is a divine pattern that God's created in us, that regardless of what you believe, if you follow, you will benefit from it. So welcome, and I hope this helps you too. So we're in John 4, right, and the context is this. Jesus has begun his ministry. He's begun preaching the good news. He's, become, he's, he's preaching about the kingdom of God being here. He's accompanying that with work of miracles and, and signs and wonders. And he is on a trek. He's moving all the way down from Judea, going all the way up north to Galilee. He's going through Samaria. It's a pretty long walk. 
uh, try to figure out how much would be an estimate between, I don't know, 12 hours walking, 25 hours walking, depending on the route he takes. So it's, it's, it's a bit of a trek. Yeah, and he's been walking, he stops, and it's in a hot day. And, and he, he talks to someone at, by the well, and he asks for some water, and there's a great interaction. We're not going to go into that. As far as I can tell, he didn't get his water, his physical water. <laughs> And, and the, the disciples catch up with him, and they must be tired, but they're also worried about him, and they, they're, they're worried about his physical needs and his, his need of food. And so in verse 31, it says, Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, that's teacher, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. My food is to do the will of him who sent me to accomplish his work. So what does Jesus say? The disciples are concerned about his need for food to satisfy his earthly hunger. And make no mistake, Jesus was man. He was hungry. I'm sure he was tired as well of the long walk. Hungry, thirsty, And yet, Jesus, despite the intense hunger and thirst that he must have felt, he was still able to find a higher form of satisfaction in the food, the food that he was doing, which is the work that God had given him, his role in life. He he had found deeper satisfaction in that, right? And I don't know about you, but if I was in Jesus' situation, I sure would like a burger and a cold beer on that time, right? (laughs) So what is it that drove Jesus to, to, to be able to to feel that uh, just drive and passion and purpose in his life. And can we access it too? Because I don't know about you, but I've recently found myself complaining a lot about my work situation. I mean, I work in the NHS. Hands up, you work in the NHS. Woo! Woo! Stay strong, people. (laughs) Stay strong, because the NHS is not an easy place to work in at the moment. Um, I'm a doctor, and in, in my part of my career, uh, you, you typically, you know, you, you progress in your work, but you also progress to become a consultant. That's, that's where you, you end up, right? And uh, five, six years ago, around 90% of people would be progressing on that, on that ladder, on that kind of career to become a consultant. A couple of years ago, it was less than 50%, right? We're in, a, we're in a time in our lives where people in my profession are just leaving. They're leaving to do jobs that pay more. They're leaving to do jobs that are less stressful, uh, and they're leaving the country to do the same job elsewhere where it pays better. And so it's a tough time to be sometimes. And, and I have to say, that creeps up on me sometimes. You know, I was, sometimes I feel, well, you know, I work really hard, but I don't get treated as good as I should be, or I don't get paid as much as I could be, or, well, what, what, do, what can I do to secure my future, my, the future for my kids and my family? What, what do I need to do different? You know, should I be considering something else? It creeps up on me, and I, and I think about it, and it affects my work. And I don't know what your situation is. It might be similar to mine. You know, you might find yourself, you know, maybe you do find yourself in a job that you're, you're great and everything is good, and then praise God, that's a great season for you. Enter it. But you might not. You might be in a job that you hate, frankly. You might be in a job where your, your, your manager, your boss, your, your colleagues are making life difficult for you. It might be tiring and exhausting, might not pay enough. You might even not be able to do as much work as you want because of a phys- physical illness, handicap. I think all of this is common to both believers and unbelievers. And even if you're in a situation where you're not even able to get any work because you're unemployed, you know, that, I mean, that is tough as well. But despite that, I think and I know that there is purpose for you. And that is purpose for you right now, regardless of your situation, that you can find greater satisfaction. That satisfaction that Jesus was talking about is here for you, regardless of where you are, what your situation is. So we're going to look a little bit more into that. But the main message that I want to portray to you, even if you're not an unbeliever, is this. Next slide, please, is that God gave us work to do that satisfies us, that benefits others, and that glorifies him. God gave us work that is satisfying, that benefits others, and that glorifies him. And those three things are key. I'm going to pack this a little bit. Let's start with God first. Let's talk about work and God. Have you read Genesis 1? Yeah? What did God do in Genesis 1? 
he worked. He worked from day one. He worked day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. He rested on the seventh day. But God first and foremost worked. He was there creating. He was creating beauty out of disorder. He was creating beauty out of nothing. And he was, he was bringing order out of disorder. And he was creating good things. But it wasn't just for himself. Yes, it was also for, for us. He created Adam and Eve as well so they could enjoy it with him. Right? And in Genesis 2, verse 15, what's the first thing that God does when he creates man and woman? Yes, that's right. They said, Lord God, it says in verse 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. Gardening was the first thing man and woman were made to do. Anyone like gardening here? Gardening is potentially the most divine job that you can do. <laughs> We'll talk a bit more about that later. But gardening, yes. So that was the first job. Why? And why was it? The, and why, why did he make them do that? Why did God make them garden? Why, have you ever thought of that? It's because he made them in his image. Right? He created. He brought fruit from the earth. He got his hands dirty. You know, he made, he made man from dirt. Huh. And the first thing as he makes man, he said, you get down and get, make fruit out of the dirt. You bring fruit up. Because sure. yeah. that glorifies God. And that benefits others. And that satisfies him. Wow. Yeah. And this work was meant to be enjoyable, beneficial to everyone. God's glorifying, satisfying work to do. Right? And, and that, that was God's plan for us all along. Not for us to be idle, but for us to engage in soul-satisfying, communal work. And that's what was here for us. And yet, unfortunately, because sin entered the world and we rebelled against God, part of the consequences of that is that work is not as easy as it was meant to be. It is hard. In Genesis 3, following in the story, in verse 17 and 19, it says, Cursed is the ground because of you, through painful toil, you will eat food from, from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food. So although the purpose of work still remains, there is, there is going to be hardship with it. And that is part of what we contend with now, but we have hope that one day it will be restored to its full glory. Amen. That's right. There is hope, because Jesus teaches us that there can be satisfaction in living out the purpose of God that has for us. And that we can consider this purpose to be as satisfying as food, as he did in John 4. But let's talk a little bit about work, about this, this work that he is doing. We, in our day and age, often think of work as, as what? As a means to make money, right? Employment, as a way to pay your bills. Mm. Um, and that's part of it. That's, that's definitely part of it. And, and the Bible makes no mistake. You know, it makes it clear that if you are able to work but you choose to be lazy, there's going to be consequences of that. You're going to go hungry. Right? That is, it is clear about that as well. But it's not just about making money. In fact, we just talked about it. It existed before money. Work existed before there was a mortgage to pay. Work existed before there was... Um, yeah, there were bills to pay before the need of money. Work existed before that. It wasn't a means to an end. No, work was the end itself. It was the purpose that we were made for. And I think we do sometimes fall in the trap to reduce it into that, that it's just about making money. And then the next slide says, um, we need to understand that work is an expression of God's image in you. Yeah, God created, and he created you in his image, and you, as God, like God, not as God, like God, are meant to keep creating, to bring, bring things into order out of chaos. So it doesn't, just, it doesn't just apply to when you're trying to earn a wage or a salary. It applies to everything you do. Everything you do that brings order out of chaos. Right. You might be cleaning the house. Right. There's a lot of chaos in my house that needs... <laughs> That needs order. My wife's not around. Okay, fine. Um, little kids, little kids. Um, yeah, there's everything you do that brings order out of chaos. Whether you're cleaning the house, you bring order out of chaos. Whether you're 
creating something, you're bringing, you're bringing elements and creating something beautiful out of it, whether you're, as we talked about gardening, you're planting seed into dirt and creating fruit and beautiful flowers and trees, whether you're creating music, you're creating simple tones and you bring together to create masterpieces, whether you're a writer, using words to create stories that inspire, that change lives, all of that just glorifies God. Everything you do, whether you are just picking up the, the groceries, sweeping, everything you do, everything that you do that benefits others, that brings order out of chaos, that's work. Yeah, that's, that's things that we can bring glory and find satisfaction in doing. It's not just about earning a wage, earning a salary. That's the first thing I want to say about work. And I want to say that also if you're not a believer... Yeah, I want to tell you that you can, you can find yourself experiencing this satisfaction mm. by living out your purpose, knowing that God created you for it. And by living out also, not just for yourself and for money and for, and for your status, but living out to benefit other people around you. And that's the second point I wanted to, to mention about work, is that it existed to benefit others. After um, World War II in the UK, uh, there, was a, there was an author called Dorothy Sayers, uh, next slide, please. Um, and she, this is a, she's a writer. She wrote, uh, I think it was crime, uh, crime novels, and um, she was born in Oxford. And she wrote this, which I thought was really key. She wrote that during World War II, one of the great surprises we had in our lives is that we found ourselves, for the very first time, happy. Why? Because in the first time in our lives, we found ourselves doing something not for the pay and not for the social standing, but for the sake of working together to get something done that benefited everyone. That's powerful, isn't it? In, in the midst of destruction and the rebuilding that had to do, the lack of enough, uh, enough food and you know, rationing was around and... and, and through all the, the pain and suffering, people were happy because they, it didn't matter what, what your social status was anymore. It didn't matter what your pay was anymore because you couldn't really do much with it. There was there's just too much rebuilding to do, too much healing to do. Too many people were in need. And people just said, well, okay, well, let's, let's park. I, you know, I'm going to live beyond myself now. People are giving up their lives for their nation. People are giving up their time, their energy, their effort. And suddenly, unexpectedly, they found themselves happy. Huh. Happiness. Why? Because that is the divine pattern we were made to follow. To work out of a place that benefits others. And to do the best we can at it. And that's the next point that I want to make. Is that we ought to do everything to the best and highest standard we can. Next slide, please. In, in Colossians, Paul, Paul writes a letter to the Colossians. Um, I don't know if you recognize this verse. Colossians 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as, for wor- as working for the Lord and not for human masters. Whatever you do, do the best as if you're working for God himself. Hey, that's a weighty verse. That's hard. Yeah, yeah. I find that weighing on me, and that is... I mean, I'm tempted to say, you don't, you know... Are you tempted to say that... God, you don't know my work situation. It's quite hard to say. So next slide, please. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back that up with the next, the, the verse before that. Who was Paul talking to? Did you know that? You have no excuse. It says, slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it, not only when their eye is on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of the heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for human masters. He's talking slaves or bond servants. And I'm not going to define what a slave was in that time, but there was, there's two things about them that you can say. was, was One is that they probably didn't earn much, whatever the, the definition of a slave was in that time. They probably didn't earn very much at all. And number two, they probably had no choice who they worked for. Okay? So wow. imagine being in that situation, having no choice who you work for and not earning very much and hearing this. That is challenging. That is weighty. That weighs on me but it's encouraging as well because there is power to do so. You know, I, um, I, I was talking about working in the NHS and I was doing a set of night shifts the last four nights. Um, beginning of the first couple of night shifts, I, I 
I wasn't in the right mentality doing it. I was thinking about my own comfort, thinking about how many hours sleep I can squeeze in my night shift, thinking about, oh, how can I try and get my work done as soon as possible, and how, what can I delay until the day team to do? What can I hand over? <laughs> Just being honest here. Uh, delega I'm delegating, I say. No, what can I do? Delegate. What can I delegate so I can sleep, you know? Um, yeah, and it just, no, you're just not fulfilled. And then I, I start reading this, start, you know, trying to internalize this message. And then by the end of my night shifts, I, I remember doing a, a round, and I'm, I'm working with people who've had their operations. Um, uh, and so look, seeing some patients after they're recovering. And, uh, you know, I thought, oh, you know what, I've got to do this. I've got to do my job better. I can do better. So I started talking to one of the patients, and... Find, and, and then finding out that he he had left his phone on the ward, he couldn't call his wife, and so I just you know helped him get a phone, call his wife, and talk to him a bit more, ask him about himself. And within two minutes, this man had told me his story about how he was from Zimbabwe. He'd gone kicked out of Rhodesia, as he said, by the Rhodesian government. And he got kicked out again by the Zimbabwe government. I'm like that man had lived through a lot. He got to share that with me, and and within two minutes, I and I didn't say anything. He was trying to explain to me how he interpreted the story of when Jesus fed the 5,000. I mean, like, I was kind of incredible, just, just trying to do good for people, trying to benefit others, just led to such a great conversation. I didn't, I didn't really have to do anything. I just, just try and, and do my best for him and, and benefit him. And just, just realized I found myself being so satisfied with that interaction so satisfied of being at my work. I, didn't, I wasn't thinking about my money, my energy levels. I was just thinking about, wow, this is great. I was made for this. I was made to connect with this person, sure. even though it was only for a couple of minutes. And that is awesome. And that is available to us. You know, when you read this verse here, it's, it's an invitation. It's not, a, it's not condemnation. Because actually, in reality, you and I both know that none of us can really always do our best all the time, right? It's, we are a work in progress. This is something that we can strive for, that we are empowered to do. But yes, it, it's, not, it's not possible to always do it right all the time. But the key thing to understand, the, the make or break that you need to understand about a verse like this is that God's pleasure with you does not depend on it. God's pleasure doesn't, is based on Jesus and his perfect life. And we, being in Jesus guarantees us his pleasure with us, regardless of how well we do, regardless of what we do. This is just an invitation to experience the most out of your purpose here in life. It's not a, it's not a verse of condemnation. And you know, Jesus, when he was going to begin, when he was about to walk into beginning his ministry, um, right at the beginning, before, before he stepped into his main ministry, God said, what did he say about him? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God was well pleased in Jesus before he did any work. He didn't wait until he completed his work to, say, to display his pleasure. It is out of who he was that he was well pleased. And it is out of us that he, that he is pleased as well. And that is why working to the best of our efforts is not about earning God's pleasure. It's about giving him glory and finding the satisfaction in doing so, because that's what we're designed to do. Amen. Yeah, and one other thing that I wanted to mention today is, is this. There is no work that is more holy than another work. You know, I was joking about the garden thing the other day. I don't know about you, but sometimes I look at my work and say, you know what, in heaven, this, I'm, I'm going to be pretty redundant. <laughs> You know, I mean, like, what I do doesn't actually make much of a difference in eternity terms. Isn't it much holier to be a missionary, a pastor, a worship leader, a youth leader? Those are the real holy jobs. And that, again, is, is a fallacy of thinking. You know, that's, there is no holy or non-holy work. First thing that God did was guard, name animals. It wasn't build churches. You know, it, was, it wasn't that. It was, there is whatever you do. It is holy. There is, there is no higher or lower. That, that is such a pervasive thought, and it doesn't come from Christian, Judeo-Christian traditional way of thinking. It actually comes from the Greek way of thinking. What did they think? They thought that 
getting dirty, getting your hands dirty was, was lesser and, and evil and, and, and thinking and doing nothing and sitting and meditating was, was holy and spiritual. That's where it came from. All our philosophers, Plato, Aristotle, all, all these ones, that's what they did. They, they never did any work. They never got their hands dirty because that was evil. And for them, the higher thing to do was just sit and think and engage the mind. And that was seen as the, as the higher way of living, the holy way of living. And that, can, that, that does trickle into our thoughts as well. Mm-hmm. We've got to be careful with that and say, no, that's not true. That's everything that we do with our, God, with our, with our hands, everything we do, we do for God, we do for others. That is good work. And that's why we, were, we did work at the beginning, and we're going to be doing work at the end as well. When we get into heaven, we're not just going to be laying there idly. We're going to have soul-satisfying work to do. And it's going to be great. That was good, eh? Mm. Talking about work. (laughs) But don't forget to rest. On the seventh day, God rested. He wants you to also enjoy the fruits of your work. He wants you to enjoy time with him and for you together to enjoy all the wonderful creation that he created, the things that you've created with him. He wants you to enjoy it as well. Do you have faith to rest? Because sometimes it takes faith to rest. When you need seven days' work to pay your bills, it takes faith to rest and only work six. But there is, again, a divine pattern inbuilt in you will lead to great fruit and great reward if you follow this pattern. So do rest. I wondered if uh, the band could come up, please. If, if possible. Sorry, just to ask. Um, next slide, please. The, just to remind you, the thing that I really want to communicate today is that God gave us work to do that satisfies us, benefits us, benefits others, and glorifies him. We do this by renewing our minds and renewing our understanding of work. We, we step away from the thought that work is for our soul benefit, for our status, and for our, the avoidance of efforts. And we enter into the godly, the godly understanding of vocation, one that glorifies him through our best efforts and benefits others. You know, Suzanne brought a, a, a verse a word to us, one that I think is very dear to many of us here. Uh, next slide, please. It's, the, it's this, this verse, um, Jeremiah 29, 11, and I felt I really wanted to talk to this, about this today. You know, we, we read it, and it says, you know, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. But what I, I felt today about adding to that and, and talking about that is, and what really struck me is, is, is who this was preached to. The Israelites, when, when they received this word, they were, they were in exile. They were in Babylon. They were not where they wanted to be. And the teachers and the false teachers and false prophets at that time were saying, God is going to take us out any time now. God will do it. He will take you out and back to Israel. He will take us back to the promised land. You know, don't worry we'll be out of here soon, because God is a great God. I mean, that sounds like the kind of thing you would hear. That's what they were hearing. And God just preaches, to, well, just pro- gives Jeremiah the, the prophecy and gives the words to them saying, actually, no, this is what's going to happen. You're going to stay there for, in, for 70 years in Babylon, okay? And if you read between the words, what he's saying is most of you are going to die here in Babylon. Sure. You're, you're not going to get out of here, okay? This is, this is where you are going to be. The situation, you're not going to escape it. But despite that, he told them, I want you not to be idle. I want you to build houses. I want you to plant gardens. I want you to increase in number and seek to bring the peace and prosperity of this city. And this then became this, right? Despite of the situation that you're in, go, put your roots down, multiply, benefit Babylon, benefit those around you. Seek the peace and prosperity of the city because I have great plans for you where you are right now. Don't wait for your situation to change to experience God's blessing for you. There is fruit for you right now in your situation. You don't have to wait to break free and to go to a better place. No, right now, God says, there is fruit for you. 
right here, right now, right here in Slough. That's right. Amen. I hope we can sing one song, if that's okay. Um, if you could stand up. And I'd like everyone, as we sing this song, as we worship God, um, just think, how can you respond to this? Where do you need to change how you view your work or your study or your situation or your role? Which area will you seek to do your best effort in and benefit others? I want you just to think of that as you worship God and know that He has asked you to, He has invited you to experience food that satisfies no matter where you are, whether you're whether you're in, in a time of, of struggle and, and lack of clarity of your situation or whether you're in a great situation, there is great fruit for you. There is great purpose and pleasure for you. Let's sing, let's sing together and let's worship him and let's, let's take a moment just to reflect on that. Thank you.